All right, let's talk about Chiefs training camp practice from today, which was Thursday, August 4th. Look at some standout players and plays. Talk about Sky Moore's versatility and some very interesting ways the Chiefs seem to be using him. Debo Samuel. And much freaking more. But first, how about those? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, a.k.a. the Redbearded Paul Bunyan, or sometimes known as Redbeard, the Gnat Slayer, because I killed a gnat. In yesterday's video, animal activists beware. And I do daily news about the Kansas City Chiefs, so make sure to sub if you're new for the most thorough coverage on the platform like this vid. If you're as stoked as I am that Sky Moore is taking handoffs out of the backfield, more on that later. And let's get into this video, starting with this quick merch plug. Because this t-shirt I'm wearing was designed by a fan of the channel, Monty Baker is his name, he's a legend, and it's up and available for purchase on my online store with all kinds of other merch as well. Link in the description if you're interested in this, a different shirt, a coffee tumbler, or more bearded merch like that. All right, enough of the promo. Today was a shorter practice for the Chiefs, a 10 by 10 by 10 practice, shorts and shells. Essentially a simulated practice where the first team offense takes the field with the second team defense and then tells the defense what plays to run. Then the second team offense comes out with the first team defense and the defense tells the second team offense what plays to run. Clear as mud? Good! It's basically set up for the first team to succeed and not a typical style of practice. Still fun though, nonetheless. If you disagree, I'll make it fun. As far as injuries are concerned, here's today's update. Tight end Jody Fortson, wide receiver Darice Fountain, and wide receiver Gary Jennings were not practicing. Fortson is still battling that minor quad issue. I like pointed down to my quad like you can see it. But we should see Fortson back soon. Meanwhile, Darice Fountain has a groin issue. Man might need sponsored by Manscaped. And then Gary Jennings actually has a concussion. Never good, so hopefully he'll be all right very soon. Then both Rashad Fenton and Lucas Niang remain on the pup list, but offensive lineman Prince Tega Wanogho was on the field today. He was working in individual drills, not much in teams. Either way, though, he seems to be healthy enough to get out there, which is a great sign for that man, that prince, that royal prince. Anyway, before diving into practice highlights from today, Albert Breer from Sports Illustrated, a.k.a. S.I., recently made a list of five things to take note of during Chiefs training camp and stuff to look out for. And I want to cover this because he's a nationally known reporter and this is good coverage for the Chiefs. So let's look at what he says real quick about these five things. The first thing he mentions is the running back room, specifically noting Isaiah Pacheco, who looks like a real player, 216 pounds, 4.3 speed and traits that remind the staff here of former Chief Kareem Hunt, only faster. Breer said it's more than traits though, as he's shown real vision, possibly even 2020, and it'll be a very interesting thing to watch as things continue to develop in the preseason. Breer didn't mention Pacheco basically is already a roster lock, though, due to Dave Tobe listing him as kick returner numero uno on special teams, which only adds to his value. And you can see him practicing that very thing here at today's practice. Pretty cool. And interestingly enough... NFL.com also dropped an article today covering the running back room for the Chiefs a bit as well. More national coverage, yes, but this article actually lists CEH as one of the 14, 14 first stringers in the NFL who could lose their starting job. Author Eric Edholm says this about CEH. The don't draft running backs in round one hive have been on a I told you so bender with CEH who started all 10 games he played last season, yes, but averaged only 4.7 yards per touch and made two costly fumbles in a pair of early season losses. Edwards Hilaire is off the physically unable to perform list, only spending a day there in camp, but he's up against it to prove He's Kansas City's best back. Ronald Jones arrives capable of unseating him. And Jarek McKinnon was the Chiefs' best all-around back by the end of the season. And that's where it stops. He didn't even mention Pacheco for starters and basically doesn't know what the heck he's even talking about. So yeah, basically, do not listen to Eric, okay? I don't care if he works for NFL.com. Do not listen to that man. Listen to my beard. CEH is going to be given the reins this season. And as long as he stays healthy, he will continue to be running back one. And while that probably is the truth, my question is this to you all. What the heck does running back one really even mean in Andy Reid's offense? The answer is not that freaking much. So don't pay too much attention either way to RB1 because 
It doesn't matter. We all know here in KC, Andy Reid will use the entire running back room and will utilize multiple backs each game. Anyway, back to Breer's little article. I do apologize for the detour. Hope you enjoyed, though. The second thing he mentions to keep tabs on is the fourth-year safety Juan Thornhill, who has been growing and coming into a leader of his own on the team. The thought at the moment from Chiefs staff is that both Thornhill and Reid can be used interchangeably, which will allow for Spags to get creative in using them. My wife is burning dinner, if you were wondering what that noise was. Then, of course, the Chiefs' second-round draft pick, Brian Cook, will be seen entering the mix as well, and he's quite the nasty little fellow known for borderline decapitating people out on the field. The third thing that Albert Breer from SI mentioned is the Chiefs' cornerback room where he says, outside of Legereus Sneed and Trent McDuffie. The third spot is wide open due to Fenton's shoulder injury. Fenton, of course, is still the expected favorite, but the Chiefs have been giving some solid nods to fourth-round rookie Joshua Williams and even seventh-rounder Jalen Watson as well, who, again, could be seen getting reps with the first team today, by the way. And then the fourth thing that Albert says to keep our pupils on, fully dilated, is the right tackle battle, though... As we will talk about more later, it's not that much of a battle right now. Wiley, Andrew Wiley, is the preferred starter at the moment with Niang out. And Kennard is still being developed. I mean, we're going to see how he shapes up, most likely during preseason. But as of right now, Wiley is the starter. And there's not really any debate there. He was literally brought in to be the right tackle. And then the fifth thing mentioned is Patrick Mahomes taking more and more ownership of the team this season. You know, kind of like he's done with the Broncos, Chargers, and Raiders every single year as well. Own them. But for the Chiefs specifically, (laughs) and his reason why, it's because the wide receiver room has basically been reset. The biggest difference this year is that the Chiefs traded away speed. I mean, they literally traded away a cheetah for an upgrade of overall skill, meaning this. Wide receivers two through five is much better this year than last year. And of course, overall size. So there you have it. Five things Albert Breer thinks we should be watching for, which is really nothing new here on this channel, but a good National covered overview nonetheless. From here, let's talk about some standout players and plays from today's practice. And the footage you're about to see is mainly courtesy to footage from the legends, specifically BJ Kissel over at KC Sports Network. Make sure to follow them on Twitter if you haven't already. Sub to their YouTube channel, all that good stuff because they're posting clips like these almost every single day. All right, the first player to highlight is defensive end Carlos Dunlap because he did indeed practice today and could be seen out there getting a bit acclimated. More on him later when I cover his presser. Then next up, here's a very nice snag by a man who gets very little attention recently, and that is running back Isaiah Pacheco. Wow, go figure. It's a very nice display of pass catching skills on that one. And I assure you, the Chiefs coaching staff took note of this as well in their little notebooks because you more than likely will not see Ronald Jones making plays like that. Book it, the beard said so. Another play to mention is once again, McColl Hardman lined up in Wildcat and this time he delayed a handoff to somebody we never talk about, Isaiah Pacheco, who found some decent running room. This could be a popular play should they choose to run it in a game. So interesting to know. And once again, Pacheco getting shown some love here with the ones. Then here's a nice connect from Mahomes to tight end Noah Gray, which is honestly a good thing. I've heard that Noah seems to be stepping up this year. And if he continues improving on offense, Combined with his special teams usage by Coach Dave, he's only further making things difficult for Noah Gray to remain relevant on the Chiefs roster, at least in my bearded opinion. ESPN's Adam Teicher then mentioned that today, MVS dropped two deep ball passes and then went on to say that drops have been a thing for him at camp even before today. So... That's not something you like to hear about from someone the Chiefs just signed to a three-year, $30 million deal. No freaking siree. Adam then posted a follow-up tweet saying, third time was a charm for MBS. He just caught a deep throw, one that was underthrown. So MBS drops the easies and catches the difficults. Makes sense to me. Just go ahead and get all these little drops out of your system now, please and thank you. But in all seriousness, I'm sure MVS will be fine. He has struggled in the past with drop issues, but last season literally had Z-E-R-O. Yes, goose freaking egg drops. And sticking to receivers here for a moment, it was noted that Cornell Powell had his best, yeah, 
best day of camp so far. He got reps with the first team's offense and even caught a deep ball for a score from Patrick Mahomes. It was against the second defense, but still, it's the most active Powell has been all camp. Some nice showing from Powell, who is fighting for that wide receiver five or six spot. And while I think wide receiver Justin Watson nearly has one of those locked down for sure, Cornell Powell's time to shine is right meow with Therese Fountain being injured. And it seems that Powell definitely made most of that opportunity today. So great job, Cornell Powell. And let's keep the receiver train moving here because the next clip reveals a very interesting look at this wild Andy Reid concoction of a play featuring McKinnon in motion on a jet sweep type of look, yet Sky Moore is actually the one who gets handed the ball out of the backfield. A very unique display of sorcery here from Andy Reid and company. And interestingly enough, about eight days ago, Juju Smith-Schuster commented in a presser that he could see Sky Moore playing some running back. You know, he has a guy, you know, speed, hands, all the way around, smart, smart kid. Uh, he's a great player. It's going to show. He's going to help us out a lot. Uh, inside, outside, potentially I could see him playing running back doing stuff like that just because he got it in him. Interesting. It's almost like Juju spoke that into existence because just yesterday, Sky was seen actually practicing some carries in individual work. And then one day later, boom, this play. Charles Goldman of Chiefs Wire says, tongue in cheek, I believe that Sky Moore is the next Debo Samuel. And while it's a bit early to confirm anything like that, it certainly looks like Sky is going to be getting a lot of different looks this season from the Chiefs. You can see him making all kinds of great catches at training camp so far, including this deep ball from today where Sky is actually being covered by Casper the Ghost, or at the very least, the ghost of Sorensen's past. Because yeah, <laughs> there was literally nobody there. I can already see Tyron Matthew with his hands up in the air right now like he was last season. Anyway, he's gone, and so is Sorensen. Praise the heavens. On top of these deep passes, Sky could also be seen running quick out routes, catching screen passes, running jet sweeps, returning punts on special teams, which is a bonus, and now even getting handed the ball out of the backfield like a legitimate halfback. I'm a little surprised about the handoff here because this isn't something Sky was seen doing much of in college, but listen, Andy Reid knows what he's doing, and he must see something in Sky that would cause him to even try this out in practice in the first place. And I promise you this much, Coach Reed is an offensive genius and will utilize some form of this in a game. You can mark my words, whether or not Sky actually gets the ball or the jet sweep happens and Mahomes gives it to McKinnon or whoever's running that in the backfield. I don't know, but it's gonna freaking happen, so book it. Sky is a very interesting development to me, quickly becoming a standout at camp and now a very likely Swiss Army knife for the Chiefs offense. Never a bad thing. What did you guys think about today's practice, the plays? Are you still excited about Pacheco taking another grown man's job? What about Sky Moore getting some Debo Samuel type looks over the course of training camp? Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments down below and let's throw haymakers about it down there per usual. And make sure to leave a bearded comment or a super thanks to potentially be featured in an upcoming vid. Like this vid right freaking now for the algorithm push and then check out this video here, pew, which is Carlos Dunlap's full presser from today. And until next time, let's go. Let's freaking go. How about those?